Hello everybody, my name is Masha Kopitz. I'm from the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. And as mentioned before, I'm going to present our work today that is a collaboration between University of Neuchâtel and Lille. Um, I'm going to talk about BitWatts, a process level power estimation tool that works on both on physical machines and in virtualized environments. Data centers are getting bigger and bigger and there are more and more powerful CPUs in data centers. Even though that hardware in general gets more and more energy efficient, still cloud computing requires a lot of energy. Recent studies have shown that cloud computing requires more energy than entire countries like India or Germany. The goal of our research is to reduce the energy consumption on different levels. In particular, in this work, we are providing an approach to estimate power consumption. Virtualization is nowadays a de facto standard in data center management frameworks. In order to, um, do energy to measure energy efficiency, we need to know what resources are required. The resources that are required can be from the application, from a virtual machine, or from the physical machine. We want to understand, in particular at the fine-grained level, which application is the largest power consumer in order to do something about it. Often, the hardware facilities are not available or are too coarse-grained. For example, we can plug a, a physical power meter to one specific machine or to a rack of machines, but we cannot just plug a hardware um, power meter to a virtual machine, because a virtual machine might be moved from one physical machine to another. It might be on the same physical machine with other virtual machines. Current approaches that are estimating the power consumption in virtualized environments are often considering VMs as black boxes running a single application. That means that they are doing power estimations for virtual machines, but just for the entire virtual machine, not for a specific process that is running within a virtual machine. Other approaches are, require adaptations to the hypervisor or to the guest or host operating system. In our work, we will I will present BitWatts, which is a process level power estimation tool that does consider VMs as white boxes, meaning that we are able to estimate the power consumption of one specific process running within a VM. Furthermore, we do not require any adaptations to hypervisors or to the operating system running on the host or the guest. So now some of you might think why they are not just using Intel REPL counters that do exist. So if we look at this workload that is a decreasing CPU workload uh, and we consider the power consumption over time and we compare the power estimation done by the REPL counters to the power estimation done by BitWatts, so our approach, and values that we measured with the physical power meter called PowerSpy. We notice that general the, for the REPL counters the tendency is correct but there is an overestimation, especially when the load of the CPU is getting lower. This is due to the fact that REPL, in the Intel REPL counters are more accurate when it comes to all the resources of the CPU or of the CPU package are being utilized. When there is only a, sm a small subset of the resources that are available that is used by your workload, they are less accurate. And BitWatt is way more accurate and more close to the physical power me meter values. In the, when we want to estimate the power consumption of a virtual machine or a process running within a virtual machine, this is a requirement. We need to, n because usually typically virtual machines are using only a subset of the resources that are available on the physical host they are running on. That's why we need a more accurate estimation. One example where we could be using BitWatts is in the case of the cloud service for nested virtualization. In that scenario, we imagine that the user starts its own user-controlled hypervisors within the VM that he receives from the data center. For example, he, he, what he wants to, he wants to, we want to get the power consumption of a single VM at the highest level of nesting meaning we want to understand what is the power consumption of a VM that a specific user started within another VM. This is important in the case, for example, of power over pricing. In that case, we want to aggregate 
the power consumption for a user. But one user might have been, might been running different VMs within, on different physical machines or different applications in different VMs running on, dif on different machines. So that's why in the distributed setup of Bitwars, we are able to aggregate all those information for one user. In general, Bitwars consists of two phases. First, we have in the offline phase, we are having a learning phase where we learn the characteristics of uh, the specific hardware and we uh, generate a power model from that learn from the, what we learned. This is done once for every specific hardware and then uh, the power model can be used for power estimation on all phase is the online power estimation where we are actually estimating the power consumption of a specific process. Bitwatts is a middleware that is based uh, on the actor model. The actor model is able to, um, to try and have a throughput of 50 million messages per second. Of course, in our case, unfortunately, we are not reaching to that speed because we are relying on libpfm. And with libpfm, uh, due to the access to the hardware counters that we're doing with libpfm, we are having a bottleneck there. So when we are running Bitwads in our virtualized environment, we will have one instance of Bitwads running on the host, and one instance of Bitwads will be running in the guest. Bitwads consist in consists of uh, four modules, a sensor, a formula, aggregator, and a reporter. Depending on the context, so whether it's on running in the host, in the guest, or also depending <coughs> whether it's a host Bitwads instance and whether there are virtual machines or not, the reporter and the sensor might be working differently. So let's look at an example for this. The sensor that is running uh, in the bit one instance in the host is reading the hardware performance counters from the lip with using the libpfm library. It will then pass the values that it read on to the formula and the aggregator in order that the power model can be applied and the power that is um, the result of the formula can be attributed. The reporter is then in charge of logging either those information to a file or, in the case of this example, to pass those information using a virtual serial channel to the guest. In this case, the power estimation that is done on the host is the power that is consumed by the entire virtual machine. We are using a virtual serial channel to communicate that information from the host inside the virtual machine. In the virtual machine, again, we have a bit once instance running. This time, the sensor will receive the power consumption from <coughs> using the virtual serial channel from the reporter of the bit once instance running on the host. And as well, it will read from the procfs to understand the power value that it received, which is for the entire VM, and to break it down for a single process that is running within that specific VM. Again, here we are having a, a formula and an aggregator so that the power model can be applied and attributed. The reporter that is running in the Bitwas instance on the guest can again either log simply the power and estimations to a file or in the case of a distributed setup, it can communicate that information to, to another system, for example, using a zero MQ channel. In order to do that, power estimations, we need the power model, as mentioned before. Our power model in the learning phase is done for all the different CPU frequencies that are available on the specific hardware and for all the number of cores that are available on that hardware. This allows us to cover hardware features such as hyperthreading, turbo, or frequency scaling in our model. We are using the Alcyon Power Spy as a physical power meter. As I will mention after, we need to lock the, the values from a physical power meter during our learning phase. Um, the power spy is plugged to the power plug of a machine or a server and reports the power values with Bluetooth. As a workload during the learning phase, we are using a simple stress utility. This means that even though we are using a, a simple workload during the learning phase, 
we are able to predict the power of different workloads after, once we have defined our power model. So during the learning phase, as mentioned before, we will be going through the different CPU frequencies and using different number of cores, and we will be logging the power with the physical power meter. And we will furthermore consider the hardware counters. In our case, we are using unhalted cycles and reference cycles. One of those counters reflects the activity of the processor, and the other one measures the current frequency. We then apply a polynomial regression to the values that we gathered in the first sampling phase. This polynomial regression generates a one formula for each frequency that is available on that hardware. Each of that formula is of degree two. This is a good trade-off between uh, the cost and the accuracy. One thing I want to mention in particular about the power model is that we are considering the idle power. If we refer to idle power, we mean the power that is consumed just by having the system, like the machine, the hardware running, and having the operating system running without any particular workload. For more details about exact content of the power model, please refer to the paper. In our evaluation, we are considering two different hardwares and two different benchmarks. First of all, we are having an Intel Xeon machine that has a hyper-threading feature with four physical cores and eight threads. It has a speed step feature and turbo boost. The second machine that we are using are Intel i3 machines with a hyper-threading as well, but only two physical cores and four threads, and uh, with the speed step functionality, but there is no turbo <coughs> in that machine. For virtualization, we are using KVM, and the first benchmark that, we, that I will ex show is Parsec. Parsec is a multi-threaded CPU intense benchmark, and we will use it as a simple verification. In the second part of the evaluation, we will uh, use SpecJBB 2013, which is a real-world benchmark that is multi-threaded and distributed. So let's discuss some of the results that we achieved with the Parsec benchmark when scaling multiple VMs. Those experiments were run on the Xeon machine that I mentioned before. So we have four physical cores and eight threads. We are scaling the, the benchmark by running from one up to four VMs in parallel containing that workload. First of all, let's look at a very simple case where we have uh, only one virtual machine containing uh, any of the Parsec one of the Parsec benchmarks running on the host. Here we realized that the accuracy that we found, whether when the benchmark is running on the individual machine or when the benchmark is running on the host, is the same. So our accuracy is not impacted by the fact that the workload is running in a virtual machine compared to running on the host. If we look at the at the values when scaling up, so we're looking at the case where we are running four virtual machines, each one having one core, on a machine with four physical cores. So when we are getting closer to the number of physical cores available, we notice that we have an increasing, increasing error. The max error that we found is around 10%. This is comparable to the existing work in that field, uh, but Bitwatts is um, more fine-grained than the existing approaches. On one hand, we are able to monitor a single process running within a virtual machine, and not just the virtual machine as a black box, and we are covering hardware features, such as frequency scaling, hyper-threading, or turbo features. Let's now have a look at the real-world benchmark. So SpecJBB is a, supermarket, is a software for a supermarket company, it consists of different operations, as for example, distributed warehouses, online purchases, and management operations, such as data mining. Uh, typically, a spec JBP installation consists of a controller and backend, which can be one or more backends. Since most of the work is performed in the backend, we are looking at the backend in our evaluation. We will be comparing different setups from using one to two backends, or to run the workload directly in the virtual, on the host or in the virtual machine. 
In this graph, we are looking at a very simple setup of SpecJBB, and we are looking at the power consumption over time. We are comparing our estimation with bitwatts to the power spy values, meaning the power values from the physical power meter. We notice that in this case, it's a real world benchmark because we have a lot of load variations. In the other benchmark, in Parsec, we had a more constant load. In the evaluation uh, with SpecJBB, we will basically be running two categories of exper experiments. First, we will run experiments on the host and then inside VMs. When running the experiments on the host, we will be considering different scenarios. So first of all, we will uh, consider one single backend that is pinned to two threads. So those experiments were done on an i3 machine. So we have two physical cores and four threads available on that machine. The first experiment we will be running with one backend being pinned to two threads. Then we will have two backends running on the same machine, each one pinned to two threads. And in the third experiment for the host, we will have only one backend running, but the backend has full access to all the resources, so to all the four threads available on the machine. We're doing something similar when uh, running the benchmark in, in a virtualized environment. So first of all, we are considering the case where we have one VM uh, containing a backend with two threads. Then we are scaling up having two VMs, and each of them contains a backend with two threads. And then we have only one virtual machine, and we are running both backends, each of them having two threads, as in the previous example, but they are running both in the same VM. So let's have a look at the results that we obtained. Again, we are looking at the median error and the relative error, comparing our estimation to the physical power meter. So first of all, we can compare when, whether an experiment it runs on the host or it runs in the virtual machine. On the, on the left, we see the case where we have one backend having two threads and it's running on the host. Whereas on the right, we have um, one backend that also is pinned to two threads, but that is running on the host. So what we actually want to compare is the, the accuracy. So we notice that whether it is running on the host or in the VM, we have almost the same accuracy. So our approach has no impact from by the uh, has a low impact by the virtualization. We then want to compare when we are using all the resources of the CPU or only a part of them. For that, we are looking at the uh, ex experiments that were run on the host once. Once the backend that is running on the host is pinned to two threads, and once it can make use of all the four threads that are available on that machine. Also here, we notice that our approach is accurate enough even when only a part of the resources on the machine are used. What is interesting is um, to look at an example where we have more than one process at a time. Please note that in that case, uh, we are monitoring the process each by themselves, and we are just summing up the power values and the power estimations for each of the process in order to being able to compare to the power values provided by the power spy. Here, um, so we, we, we realized that uh, when having multiple processes that we are monitoring, the hardware counters can interfere because there is less isolation between them. So we noticed that by uh, being reflected by a higher median error. So I presented you BitWatts, a middleware toolkit for process level power estimation in both virtual environments and on physical machines. Our approach managed to cover different hardware features such as hyperthreading, speed step, or turbo. We are able to scale our approach on multiple VMs, meaning that we are able to monitor the power consumption for multiple VMs running at the same time, and even more fine-grained for processes running within multiple VMs at the same time. 
We are providing a distributed monitoring support that, for example, allows us to aggregate in a data center the power consumption generated by a specific user. When using Bitwatt, there is no need for a dedicated hardware, and we have, a, we have no modifications that need to be done to the operating system or to the hypervisor. So, as mentioned before, this is a collaboration, and um, I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Hi, Ahmed Aridin from UMI University. Uh, I have one comment and one question. If you go back to the uh, evaluation uh, figures using Parsec, uh, it's actually interesting to see that uh, yes, uh, for the uh, for the lost for the VIPs uh, evaluation, you have the error decreasing when you have four cores used versus one core used, right? Mm -hmm. While for all the others, it's sort of increasing. So uh, it's interesting just to know that and to actually see how this will scale up if you have 32 virtual machines on a 32 core uh, server. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it's increasing for at least this variable in this. Uh, and, and then my second question would be actually, how many times did you perform the experiments uh, to get like these values? I mean, uh, to get th these are median errors, right? How long were the experiments? And um, yes, yeah, so this is the median power consumption that we are considering. Yes. And I can't recall right now how long actually the benchmarks were running. Okay. So is it in the order of hours versus days? versus month? Uh, no, more in order, uh, less than days, so it's from, okay. Okay, I think, thank you. more than an hour, I think, something about, yeah, I would have to check that. Okay, thank you. Some more questions? Okay. So you, you talk about uh, attributing costs to processes, like power uh, mm -hmm. to process. Uh, how do you, uh, and then you had this formula which was kind of the variable uh, power versus uh, what is idle. Uh, how do you uh, amortize the idle and, and also any additional OS costs to the processes mm -hmm. if, if you have to produce a power consumption for a process? So actually, yes, this is a very interesting question that we haven't completely solved yet. So yes, indeed, there is a problem if we consider a scenario where there we have multiple users running things on the same machine. We need somehow to split the idle power. But we are not having a complete uh, solution for that yet. But this is something we are definitely working on because this is very interesting. Because of course, the resources that a specific user might be using and even the power consumption might vary over time. So it's not even fair just to split it by half or so yeah, this is very interesting. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, hi, uh, you've been from Shanghai uh, University. And uh, my question is, um, uh, actually my question is a similar one. And uh, if you, uh, for example, in uh, Zen virtualization machine, and what if you, uh, what, how can you split the, uh, the management of VM's consumption? I mean, uh, if uh, several VMs actually require the, uh, the service from uh, another domain, another VM, how can you split, split that shared part? OK, so you mean, for example, if both of the virtual machines are accessing a storage server? Such uh, scenario actually, or? yes, maybe there is a VM that uh, offers service for other VMs. Mm -hmm. For example, network or even uh, or, or storage. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can you split uh, the power consumption? Yes, this is a bit uh, the same question as related yes. to the idle power. Yeah, there is, um, we haven't really covered that yet. Okay. But this is, of course, as well an interesting okay, question, okay, okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, Kostin Reicher from Bucharest. <coughs> so um, it seems to me that you assume power consumption is proportional to load, perfectly proportional. 
And of course, in practice, there's a step change. So when you go from zero utilization to like 5%, all of a sudden, the power increases to some base level. So maybe it's related to the previous questions, but to what extent does the accuracy of your model hinge on this assumption that power consumption is pro completely proportional to load? It's like perfect line goes to, this, uh, th uh, to zero. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that's why in our learning model, we are including um, different frequencies. Because we already, like, if we have a CPU utilization that goes up, as you mentioned, it will not be linear on most modern architectures. So that's why in our learning approach, we are including uh, the different frequencies so that we know um, what are the values for the hardware performance counters in case of a specific frequency. And furthermore, we are using the number of cores. So when we are running the learning phase, for example, on a machine with two physical cores and four threads, we would be running the stress workload from which we are learning on one, two, three, and four threads. This means that already there, when with the power values from which we are building our power model, we, ha we are having this non-linear behavior. So that's why we are able actually to cover quite well those hardware features. So that, does this mean that to estimate power consumption in a VM, you need to have full knowledge of what's going on in the system? Um, yes, generally, yes, you need at least not during the online estimation, but we need to learn the hardware before, yes, to do an accurate power estimation even with... But not the, during the online estimation? Uh, no, because once the model is built, we don't need access anymore to the hardware. We can do it within the VM. Right. Thank you. Yes. Let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you.